Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now, in the past couple of videos, we talked about equivalence classes, uh, equivalence relations, and congruence relation. Um, and in this video, I'm going to give a couple examples. Uh, the first one, uh, I mentioned that if we have equivalence classes from an equivalence relation, those equivalence classes form a partition of a set. Now, in this first example, I'm going to show that if we have any partition of a set, that partition itself defines an equivalence relation. So, if S, which is equal to the union of these n sets, is a partition of S, so in other words, each of these sets is disjoint, and all of the elements of S are in one of them, then the relation alpha, defined by S alpha T, uh, if and only if S and T are in the same uh, partition, S sub K, is an equivalence relation. So this is an example of how we can test if something is an equivalence relation. Now remember, we have to test our three properties, reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So first, we know that clearly S alpha S, right? S alpha S because S is an element. Well, actually, I should say S and S are both an element of the same set SK, right? This is clearly going to be a reflexive uh, relation because any element S is in the same set as itself. Right? And that's how we're defining the relation, is two elements are related if they're in the same set of the partition. Now let's look at reflexive. Uh, so, th or Sorry, this gives us reflexive. Let's look at symmetric. If I have that S alpha T, I know from the definition of my relation that this is true if and only if S and T are in the same SK. So then by the same definition, this is true if and only if T alpha S. So we have this symmetric relation. Right? Loosely said, if S and T are related, that means they're in the same set. So of course T and S are related because they're still in the same set. Now transitive, we want to look at, let's say, um, Let's say S alpha T and T alpha R. Well, if S alpha T and T alpha R, that means that S and T are in some set SK. And we also have, I should say and, T and R are in some set SL. But because this is a partition, T only occurs in one set. So this means that SK and SL must be the same set of the partition, right? Otherwise, T would be occurring in two different sets, which is a contradiction to our assumption that this is a partition of S. So then, of course, we can simply state that S, T, and R are all an element of the same set of the partition, SK. And this, in turn, implies that S alpha R. So it's S alpha T and T alpha R, then S alpha R. So transitive. Check. So we have two different directions we can go. Anytime that we have an equivalence relation, that's going to define some partition of the set we're taking the relation on. And if we ever have a partition of a set, that partition itself defines an equivalence relation as well. All right, now the second question is going to deal with congruence. The question says, find the congruence classes modulo 3. So remember that A congruent to B modulo 3, we write that mod 3 here, if and only if 3 is a divisor of the difference A minus B. Right? So the numbers in A are those numbers which have the same remainder when divided by 3, right? That means that well, a minus b is going to have some remainder, and that remainder is going to be 0 if this is true. So everything in a is going to have the same remainder when divided by 3. In other words, the equivalence class a is going to be equal to all of the numbers a plus 3k for some k in the integers. Right? If I add something to a that is a multiple of 3, 
and then I subtract b from this, well 3 divides a minus b, and 3 divides 3k, so 3 is still going to divide this number minus b. Right? So all of those are going to be here in this equivalence class. So in other words, a as a congruence class, this is going to be equal to, and I'll dot 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 both sides, right, this will be a minus 9, and of course to the left I have a minus 12, a minus 15, etc. a minus 6, a minus 3, a itself, a plus 3, a plus 6, etc. Right. These are all of the elements that are in the congruence class of any element a. Now if you take the difference of a and any of these, you're going to get a multiple of 3. Right? The a's will cancel, get a minus a, and that will have either a positive or negative number that's a pure, um, or sorry, that has 3 as a divisor. Right? So 3 is going to divide the difference between any of these numbers in this set. So I can start plugging in some a's and see what happens. If I plug in 0, I'm just going to get the multiples of 3. If I plug in 1, I'm going to get, starting here, negative 5, uh, negative 2, 1, 4, etc. If I plug in um, 2, I'm going to get negative 4, negative 1, 2, 5, etc. And if I plug in 3, I'm going to get negative 3, 0, 3, 6, etc. Which was the same thing that I got when I plugged in 0. Now when I start plugging in repeated numbers, every time I have um, every time I can write a number as 3 plus something, I can take that 3 away, add it to this little uh, extra thing that I'm adding or subtracting, and it's going to resolve. So in other words, I only have three unique congruence classes, and I can represent those by 0, 1, and 2. Plugging in larger values of a, we'll see that clearly 0 is going to be the same thing as the equivalence class generated by 3, which is the same as the equivalence class generated by 6, etc. Right? For one of these, for example, for 3, this will be 0, and then I'll increase by 3 to the right, decrease by 3 to the left. If I plug in 6, this will be 0. I'll increase by 3 to the right, decrease by 3 to the left, etc. So these are all the same congruence class. In the same sense, 1 is going to be the same congruence class as 4 which is going to be the same congruence class as um, 7. We can keep going. If I plug in 1, then this will be 1 right here, and I'll increase by 3 to the right, decrease by 3 each term to the left. If I plug in 4, then I'll have 1 right here, increase by 3 to the right, decrease by 3 to the left. And you kind of uh, get the pattern, right? And then, of course, we have 2. The congruence class 2 is going to be equal to the congruence class 5 which is equal to the congruence class 8, etc. So all of the numbers are going to be in one of these congruence classes, and these three congruence classes partition the set as we expect. So these are the unique disjoint congruence classes modulo 3, just these three right here. All right, now in the next section we're going to start talking about functions, particularly functions as relations, and uh, we'll see you there.